the abbreviation AX3600, found in the description and displayed on the packaging of the TP-Link EAP660 HD access point, means a total bandwidth of 3550 megabits per second, which means that you can finally feel a real speed advantage over the top-end APS of the previous generation of the 802.11 AC standard. And, in general, following the all-wireless concept, build wireless networks with 4K and 8K streaming. The demand for such technologies from businesses is huge, this includes digital signage, intelligent surveillance systems, IoT, and just thousands of customers with modern smartphones. The EAP 660 HD access point has eight spatial streams, giving a total speed of about 3.4 gbit per second. Their configuration is symmetrical. 2.4 GHz, 4x4+, 5 GHz, 4x4, that is, four antennas per reception and transmission in each of the bands. This is very good news for customers located at a considerable distance from the access point. Four antennas in the 2.4 GHZ band will give good coverage, for example, for autonomous robots or IoT sensors. At the same time, servers, terminals and clients located near the EAP 660 HD will receive high bandwidth. The maximum power consumption of the TP-Link EAP 660 HD is 15 to 17 watts, so you need an 802.3 at switch or injector to connect via PO, also known as PO Plus. But there are no problems with this now. Almost any PO switch released over the past three years has support for PO Plus. What makes an access point a true industrial solution is its own platform for managing and monitoring the fleet of your WLAN network. At TP-Link, this solution is called Amata SDN, and it is a single platform that can be present as a separate device installed in a rack or as a software server running under Windows or Linux. Naturally, this controller combines the management of different TP-Link devices, whether they are security gateways, access points or switches. The AP660 HD access points themselves can only be used for an infrastructure type topology, i.e. the hotspot can act as an access point for client devices connecting to your network, but it cannot connect to other WLAN networks in WDS mode and does not have PO to access the internet without a gateway and the access point itself cannot act as a controller for its fellows. This imposes restrictions on use in harsh edge conditions, but this model does not target this sector, and in hotels, campuses, restaurants and business centers, the infrastructure is usually already prepared for Wi-Fi. When testing, we will check the theoretically maximum performance of the access point at a distance of 2 meters. To do this, we will complete the test stand with two Wi-Fi adapters based on Intel AX200 and check the speed, use iPerf3. The TP-Link EAP660 HD access point does not support a 160 MHz channel width because it is not designed for clients to drive traffic at speeds below 1 gigabit per second. For most cases, providing access to the network, in some room or on the site, this is not necessary. But still, in our case, the performance of the device was limited to 1.2 bit per second, and this speed was achieved only with simultaneous connection over two bands, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. The performance towards uplink and downlink did not differ. When installing a modern wireless network of the Wi-Fi 6 standard, you will notice that access points of this standard have a significantly higher price than 802.11 AC models, and even entry-level models are several times more expensive. Naturally, the question arises. In which cases it is worth choosing more expensive and functional models, and when to make a choice in favor of the initial segment. TP-Link has an excellent EAP620 HD access point, which is designed for mass installation everywhere. The EAP660 HD model has the same functionality and can operate under the same Amata controller, which today puts TP-Link products on a par with brands in the more expensive segment.